Adam from The Authentic Sales. Today, Prosper and I are going to be talking about marketing. It's our episode four of our five series episodes. Marketing, the difference between marketing and sales and how marketing can create you a revenue stream that will stand the test of time. Buckle in. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back again with another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And as usual, we've got Adam. Adam, how are you doing, my man? Hey, Prosper. Good morning. How are you, brother? Fantastic. I feel like we should actually be just sitting in the same office now, considering we're just uh, meeting every Friday to put out these amazing episodes uh, together. Thank you so much for your time so far, man. Uh, likewise, it's been good fun. Enjoy Absolutely. It. All right. For those that are just tuning in for the first time, uh, me and Adam, who is an international, internationally published author, a sales expert and course creator who actually helps growth mindset and purpose driven business owners to scale their businesses by increasing their sales, their profits and systems and actually creating um, for them more time in their business instead of working on it consistently so that they have a sellable asset uh, of real value. So we've been talking mainly about, um, you know, leadership. We've spoken about mindset and we dabbled a little bit last week on the skill sets that actually are required in order for you to create that sellable asset. And today we're going to dive into one thing that a lot of you have been anticipating, which has to do with marketing and sales. And we're going to be looking at the actual importance um, you know, of prospecting and lead generation and also the difference that actually comes along, um, you know, between what marketing actually is and uh, where the sales take over from where the marketing team has left off or vice versa. Okay. So without further ado, I'll just, um, uh, you know, give Adam, um, you know, an opportunity to just give us a brief outline of who he is and why it is very important for us to be listening to him today. Now, Adam, tell us a little bit about sort of how you started on your journey and why it's crucial for us to listen to you today, especially when it comes to, um, you know, marketing and the difference that it has with sales. Yeah, thanks, Prosper. So, uh, look, my background has been commission selling. I started back in 2001 in my first commission job. Um, and multiple industries, multiple sectors, face to face, over the phone, on stage. Um, and over that period of time, I have done a lot of prospecting, like a lot. And, you know, smashing the phones, knocking on doors, you, you name it, networking. It's, it's, I mean, all the different things that we do to generate the possibility of having a conversation with somebody. Um, and over that period of time too, in the last you know two to three decades, I have invested hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars into marketing uh, in order to generate leads on top of traditional you know prospecting. Um, and what I've learned throughout the journey is that um, th there's a there's a big um, and and a, again it happened to me yesterday. I was doing a sales strategy session with a client of mine. And he actually thought that sales and marketing was the same because I said to him, what's your marketing budget? And then I asked him, what's your sales budget? Because everybody puts their eggs into marketing and nobody puts their eggs into sales. And he said, well, isn't sales and marketing the same? And that was just a really big wow. If that's what people think, it's no wonder people are not making enough sales and it's no wonder then they're not creating a saleable asset because they're not getting the sales. And interestingly enough too, Prosper, I did a, um, a survey, uh, sorry, a poll on LinkedIn um, two weeks ago. And the poll was, what's the number one thing that you focus on in your business? Is it leads? Is it sales? Or is it profit? 78% said leads, 22% said sales, and guess how many said profit? Wow. So if we are in business to get leads, we've lost focus on the actual profit that makes us the money. The leads don't make us the money. So what we need to do is we need to understand the difference between marketing and sales first. 
Marketing is simply to generate inquiry. That's it. And there's multiple, multiple, multiple ways that you can do that, which we can touch on today. But the sales side of things is where we turn that inquiry into conversation, into collaboration, and then into profit. And if we don't get that back end part right, then it doesn't matter how much time or how much money you invest in your marketing, you will be out of business in a short period of time. Absolutely. And you're absolutely right. And I think maybe a lot of it has to do with the mindset um, that comes along with it. Because whenever we think of sales, we're thinking of that sleazy uh, used car salesperson or those door knockers that would come at our door. Um, you know, in order for, for people to actually convince us to change our electricity or gas or whatever it is that they were doing at that particular time. Now, you really touched up on something that's very crucial and you, you, you also try to separate uh, what marketing is and what sales um, is within, within the business. Which one is actually much more important in your own, um, you know, ass um, you know ass assessment then? Uh, I think they're equally as important. Uh, and I think you, you have to invest equally into both. Uh, instead of having all of your eggs in one, you can't make sales if you don't have leads. That's a given, right? But if you're getting too many leads and they're not qualified leads and they're not the right people that you're talking to, then you're wasting time, you're wasting money, you're wasting all of your resources um, and, and not capitalizing on the right people um, to be able to convert into paid sales. So I think it's a, I think it's an even split, but I think they need to be separated as two individual beasts that we work collectively on for the for the end outcome. Absolutely, and I really liked the that um, you know emphasis on the equal importance because some people would then just think, oh wait a minute, I just need to continuously get more leads. And as you have mentioned, that more leads don't always equate to sales. Okay. Now, we obviously need to continually prospect on a daily basis and keep filling our funnels and maybe our uh, pipeline so that we've That's got right. more leads coming through our system and resulting in more people that we can talk to so that we can obviously have more sales. Now, there's one big challenge that a lot of business owners face, which, which is how they are prospecting and how they actually start this um, sort of buyer's journey. Could you maybe elaborate to us how you managed to start having these conversations with the people throughout, um, you know, your, 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 your history that you mentioned earlier? Yeah. Yeah. So what you touched on two things there, you touched on prospecting and then you touched on the buyer's journey. Um, in a traditional business world, when we're prospecting, are we focusing on the buyer's journey or are we focusing on the seller's journey? So usually people are, are focusing on, on the seller's journey, really. Seller's journey, right? So if you think back to the first couple of ep um, uh, episodes that we've done, the, the first one we spoke about leadership, the second one we spoke about mindset, um, and then the third one was skills. In the skills, we spoke about rapport building. In the mindset, we spoke about a little bit about ego um, and detachment, and leadership was about you know being the demonstration. So traditional prospecting doesn't have any of that in there. There's no demonstration. There's no detachment. There's no uh, de and I'm, when I say detachment, it's detachment from the outcome because when we're prospecting, we're attached to the outcome. And, and the reason that people don't like those sleazy sales people is because they know that they're attached to the outcome of getting a sale. So after two decades of doing that um, and realizing that making a hundred phone calls a day and no one answering, no one returning the phone calls and people hanging up on me, it, it's a broken model. It doesn't work, right? We're just we're wasting it, all of our resources in doing that. So, what I learned was the actual buyer's journey as opposed to the seller's journey. And the buyer's journey is very, very different. People have touch points. I talk about this a lot and you'd know this in the marketing world. We need 21, I believe it's 21 touch points now, right? And for those yeah. who don't know what a touch point is, a touch point is how many times 
you need to be seen by your audience in order for them to trust you enough to want to buy. So they need to see you a minimum 21 times. So how many emails is that? How many phone calls is that? How many SMSs is that? How many videos are you putting out for that? How, like so much content is going out there to build that trust. And they need to interact with you on that at least seven times before that trust starts to solidify within them. So if we're coming from that seller's journey, we're not, we're not focusing on the buyer, we're focusing on the sale. When we're coming from it from a, a space where in our marketing and in our prospecting, where it's all about the buyer's journey, I'll give you some stats, Prosper. You probably know this too. 60% of people out there are not looking for what you've got. So if you advertise and you generate 100 leads, I can guarantee you now that 60% of those people, 60 of them, have clicked on your ad. They don't know why they've clicked on your ad. They don't know why they've responded. They can't remember why they've responded and they're not interested in what you've got. So that's 60 phone calls that you need to make once, twice, three times to try and get hold of these people that aren't interested. When we know that that's the case, what we then need to do is focus on the 40% of the people that are in the buyer's journey, the buyer's cycle. That Out of that 40%, 20% of those people know they want something. So you and I are sitting here, we're talking sales, we're talking marketing. So the audience that's going to be listening to this episode know that they want to get better with sales and want to get better with their marketing, but they don't know what they don't know and they don't know what else they need, but they know they need some help. So our job is to start educating these people. So there's a difference between selling to them versus educating them and, and understanding what their needs are, understanding what their wants are, understanding what their problems are, and then collaborating with them on providing the solutions that are best fit for them, not the solutions that are best fit for us from what our bosses have told us to sell today. 17% of the people have already done their research. Thanks to the internet, we all do our research. If we want to buy something, whether it's a watch or a microphone or a book or whatever it might be, we're already researching it and we're looking for the best price at the same time. We've got that amount of information at our fingertips now, which we didn't have 10 years ago. But those 17% still need to have that communication with the salespeople to make sure they're making the right buying decision for them. And a perfect example of this is that we recently purchased a car. Um, I knew exactly the make and model that we wanted to buy. We went to the car yard, we test drove it, and I didn't like it. I ended up driving away the same day with a different car, a different model and a different year because I enjoyed that more. But I'd already done so much research on everything else to get the car that I thought we wanted. And then we drove away with something else. And thanks to the salesperson helping us with whatever we needed, we were able to make a, a more informed decision on what was best for us. But obviously, right? that being the case, you now knew what you wanted and what you didn't want. And when you saw what you wanted, it really clicked. So obviously, that would have helped quite a lot. Yeah. 100%. Very different to the guy knocking on the door saying, do you want to buy some Encyclopedia Britannicas? Or you want to, you know, <laughs> we're going to be doing some solar in your street next week or yeah, let's, uh, let's fix up your energy bills and like, go away. <laughs> um, if I don't want it, don't come to me, but, but basically, and that's, and I think that's the difference, you know? So, um, and, I, and the other 3% of people that have already done their research, they know what they want, here's their credit card, they're ready to buy. They don't even ask you any questions, but that's the buyer's journey. And what we need to do is we need to move people from that 20% into that 17% into that 3% so that that's what it is. Rewinding five, six, seven years ago, and even today, people are prospecting, they're getting on the phone, they're doing their trial closes, they're doing their step closes, they're doing their this close and that close and trying to figure out how to overcome all these objections and blah, 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 but they're not focusing on the buyer. Absolutely, because at the end of the day, people will only respond to marketing and sales that are directed at them. And you're absolutely right. You know, everybody's on a journey, um, you know, to find out information before they even 
show up at um, a, a place for that information. Now, you've mentioned something that a lot of people find um, very conflicting, especially when it comes to coaches and consultants, which is educating your audience. Are you not just simply saying we should give all our information out for free? There's a difference between giving information versus actually doing the work. So there's people out there that will want to take some information and try to do it themselves. And there's people out there that want to learn stuff, but don't want to do it themselves. So when I'm educating people, so on my LinkedIn page, I've got a private Facebook group as well. I do videos every week, like what we're doing now. We're educating people right now, but we're not selling to them. So the, the, whole, the whole point of it is to keep educating people on how they can grow because what that's doing is it's solidifying us as experts in our field. It's building deeper trust with them. If they do need help, they know exactly who to go to for marketing. They're going to go to Prosper. If they do need help for sales, they'll know from me because I haven't sold anything even though that's what I do. Yeah, you know, they can they they can trust me enough to have a conversation, and they can they can know that they're not going to be sold into anything. Absolutely, and I I visually believe in the context of you get paid in direct proportion to the value that you bring to the marketplace, and I really appreciate that you have um you know taken this upon yourself to actually help uh, both of us create this valuable content for our audience so that they can get to know, like, and trust who we are. And I also visually believe that, yeah. Can I say something? I, I, I used to believe that too. It's the value that you put on into the, into the marketplace is what we get paid on. But what I learned from one of my mentors, um, who's my transformational coach in, in, in America, Jim Fortin, um, Jim taught me that it's not the value that we put out. It's the value that it's, 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 uh, it's us valuing the value that we put out. So I can put out a lot of value to your life, but if I don't value myself and I don't value the value that I'm giving you, then I'm never going to get paid equal value for myself. Fantastic. I think that's a really good mindset shift right there, because obviously if you don't, it's it's all to do then with the self-confidence of the value that you're putting out there. But I digress. You did mention that there needs to be 21 touch points in order. Yes. I mean, obviously that's a, a minimum uh, with the way things are going on right now, um, because I can look at, at the whole buying process um, you know, people are looking at their small screens, they need constant, um, you know, validation that obviously whatever money they're going to be putting out there is not just, um, you know, you know, gonna, going to be lost. So how do you then successfully manage all these 21 touch points? I mean, obviously, like you said, you can cold call, you can do email marketing campaigns, do direct marketing attend events or things like that. But how do you manage that, especially if maybe you're the only person that's working within your business? That's a super question. Um, there's, there's two ways. Obviously, you need to have a CRM so that you, your CRM can move you know, all of your content out to multiple platforms or you have your social media, um, whoever's managing social media, spread it out over to, the, to all the platforms. So for me, how do I manage that? Um, I'll get somebody uh, that comes to me, they'll go into my CRM, they become part of my funnel nurturing system. Now that nurturing system is not to sell to, it's to nurture. So don't go spamming people with buy this, buy this, buy this, because they're just going to unsubscribe. So my philosophy is educate, educate, educate. So when they come into my system, what's going to happen is they're going to either see me and what we need to understand is where they're hanging out. So are they hanging out on Facebook? Are they hanging out on LinkedIn? Are they hanging out on YouTube? Um, are they listening to podcasts? Uh, are they the sort of person that wants to read more? Um, so we're, we're looking at all the different senses that people have and how they interact as a human being. So I'll do a video on Facebook. 
that video goes to YouTube, that video goes to LinkedIn, the audio comes out and that becomes my podcast. So, you know, we call that the Butte Awakening. <laughs> so, um, so I changed the name of that one. Thank you for that. I loved it. Um, so they can hear those videos in audio form if that's how they listen. Um, it also then goes out as a blog. So once a week, the email will go out. So I just take the extract of that video and I turn that into a blog. So I'm, I'm trying to touch point them in, in whatever areas that they're at. Now, whether they listen to the content, whether they read the content or they hear the content, that's all basic human um, communication. What's most important is they see my note. So whether they listen to it, read it or hear it, doesn't matter. As long as they see my name, then I'm still front of mind as the salesperson. You're still front of mind when I see your emails as the marketing guru, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it just reminds me from when I'm ready that that's again who I'm going to go to because I keep showing up. I keep delivering it in the same way. People have I've, I've built um, that, that level of trust and the whole authenticity in your marketing is imperative. You know, your marketing has to represent who you are as a person, not what you do. Because people don't care about what you do. But people care about who you are and how you make them feel. So when we're putting out um, all these touch points in all the different ways of marketing, being authentic and being ourselves across the board is the only way to be because then you never get caught out either. Fantastic. I really, really like that. So that's why each and every one of us must consistently be showing up and staying front of mind um, you know, because your prospects or your clients would not always remember everybody's going through stuff. We just came out of a major pandemic and people are going through financial uh, up, up, ups and downs right now based on whatever is happening in the economy. So especially when it comes to uh, for time for people to maybe give you a referral or, um, you know, mention your business at a barbecue, you literally have to stay top of mind. Otherwise, out of sight out of mind. So would you say, um, you know, people that go about, um, you know, sending out emails and educating their audiences are doing it right in this, um, you know, current e e economy right now, you say? If they're doing it from a space of education and nurturing, they're doing it right. If they're doing it from a space of spamming and selling, they're doing it wrong. I, I, that's where I wanted to go because it's not every email that is, is we, not all emails are created the same, you know? So at the end of the day, we need to constantly be, um, yes, giving up that value to our audiences so that they get to be familiar with what it is that we are doing. Okay. Now the reality is also that you're going to need to have multiple streams of say prospecting, you know, I call this, um, you know, legs of marketing that you need to constantly have, you know, because with if you're like a table, you need to have like four um, legs Stable that are legs. actually sort of sturdy. So one leg is probably going to go out and generate leads today. The other leg is going to generate leads um, the other day and so on. Um, with that in mind, okay, you now have all these people at different parts of the journey and walking, um, you know, with with wanting to work with you and things of that nature. How do you then maintain the same message when people are coming in at different intervals like that? Um, I think that comes down to, as I was touching on before, if, if you're being authentically congruent all the way through, then it doesn't matter what part of the cycle they're coming in from because they're going to pick up on the energy that's there. Uh, and they'll pick up on the message that's there. Um, it's only when they've seen you once and you've behaved in a certain way or demonstrated thing in a, something in a certain way, and then they've seen you again and you've behaved or demonstrated things in a different way that it creates confusion in their mind. And once you start to create that confusion, you actually lose that trust. Um, so what, what the consumer is looking for is depending on, or regardless of when they come through, is that consistency in the messaging and that consistency in, in how that messaging is made. Fantastic. And obviously you're generating and creating a relationship along the way, which then 
leads to more sales later on and better retention. Now, when people hear the word relationship, they probably, um, you know, freaked out or scared thinking, wait a minute, am I going to be handholding these people? Am I just going to be sitting on the call with them and, um, you know, exchanging um, pleasantries with all these people? What, what, what do you mean when you talk about relationships in prospecting? In, in in prospecting so I, I think the best way to build relationships through prospecting is understanding how to create instant rapport uh, and that's what i was very good at um that's what i learned through my nlp days um is how to create that unconscious rapport straight away so that's an important part of your prospecting is to create that rapport um once you've got that rapport the relationship that you will start to develop with that person, we're not talking about holding hands and giving each other a kiss and all that type of stuff. It's not that sort of relationship, but it's the relationship where we want to be able to speak freely and we want to be able to feel comfortable in the communication that we're having with somebody else. If we don't feel like we can speak freely and we are feeling all those you know, emotions that come up, particularly when you know they're about to ask you to buy, then the relationship that you've got is not right. So that comes down to your um, communication skills on really building a solid foundation with somebody. And you can build it very quickly with people. Like you can resonate with someone straight away or not. If you don't resonate with them, don't go there. Because it doesn't matter what you do, you will never be right and it will never be right. And it will always be that problem child that you don't want. But if there is that feeling where there's that connection, then you know you've got the relationship that you can then ask the questions that need to be asked. And in, and in many cases, if we're afraid to ask the hard question, then we're actually doing a disservice to the person that we're in front of. Absolutely. One other thing that I've noticed, uh, especially in this space for coaches and consultants is, um, you know, we can't do everything. All right. So let's talk about maybe real estate where maybe, you know, you need to be a mortgage broker, a real estate agent and a buyer's agent, and then maybe a conveyancer. So all of these are sort of strategic roles that are needed in order for somebody to purchase a dwelling or a property all right now do you also encourage maybe creating these strategic partnerships you know not necessarily selling to these people but creating relationships so that people have ammunition in order to be able to, to um you know on sell your services to their own customers as well yep well we're doing that right now you know everything that that we're doing here is a strategic relationship and, and we're doing it um, to add value to people, irrespective of whether either of us get a sale from it. Absolutely. So if you're a real estate agent, it makes sense to me to have really tight strategic partnerships with people that are conveyances, that are mortgage brokers, that are um, land developers, that are whatever it is, it's accountants, uh, whatever it is that's in your what we call a contact sphere that you can then easily say, yep, so what you need to do is you need to talk to Prosper about this. You need to talk to Adam about this. You need to talk to Bill about this because they're the ones that can help you with that. We're still providing the value. We're still giving them the solution to the problem that they have. And we're detached from us being the only person that's winning from the scenario. The end user has to win from us. Yep. Absolutely. Now, Obviously, you know, somebody's probably sitting there and thinking, wow, these guys are really dishing out great value. What would be the best way that maybe people can learn a little bit more from you, um, especially, um, you know, with your expertise and experience when it comes to sales and prospecting? Uh, you can definitely follow me on LinkedIn, um, Adam Beard. Just look me up, you'll see me there. You can follow me on Facebook as well. Um, if you want to actually have a conversation with me, you can scan the code that takes you straight into my diary uh, or you can find me on my website uh, which is www. Um, the <laughs> what a uh, mental blank the authentic sales training academy.com 
<laughs> the authentic sales training academy.com i'm going to fix that up it's going to become just authentic sales but either one of them will get you there soon absolutely i will definitely also add that to our show notes um you know in order for people to get a instant hold of you now you know as with everything there's always that skeptic that is sitting there and just going nah it ain't all about that or they say my favorite aussie uh scapegoat should be right should mate, be right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of advice do you give to people that haven't separated their marketing and sales or are uh, not being very active in their prospecting so you touched on four legs of marketing before and the reason that we have four legs of marketing is because never will all four legs be providing you what you need at the same time ever so there's going to be one thing that'll work well now one thing that'll work well tomorrow one thing that worked well in the past one thing that's just constantly ticking over in the meantime if you want to have that she'll be right mate and have all of your eggs in the one basket that everything is is a-okay statistics prove that 95% of small businesses will be out of business within a five year period. She'll be right, it's not gonna cut it. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be crying, mate. <laughs> She'll be crying. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Well, obviously, Adam, I really, really appreciate the time that we've spent together today again um you know coming up with this uh four out of five episode and um those of you that are following this uh series we have a beautiful uh last episode that we're going to be aligning all these topics that we've been talking about sort of a summary um of everything that we've gone through so you don't want to miss out on that but besides today i really appreciate you clarifying um you know this whole difference between marketing and sales and how prospecting is actually a crucial part in our day-to-day -day lives in order for us to have an asset that is sellable and of real value i can't thank you for your time today mr mr bude thank you mr prosper i appreciate your time too no worries.